Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and we're in for a real treat today because something completely different. It's the PC21. Let's roll the intro and get into it. Let me give some background. This is the PC21 by YT International or ESM, I think they're now called. This kit is about 10 years old, and that's unbelievable. Um, it looks absolutely great. So this has been part built, and it's gonna be a conversion to electric. You can probably just about see from the front there. I've just offered to help out and get it finished. So the first thing we need to do is work out what bits we've got, what's going into it, what state of play it is. So let's we'll take it inside the workshop so we can do that. Okay, so we're back in the workshop, guys. I've got the PC21 back inside, actually behind you at the moment. Um, I'm just trying to work out where to start because, as I said before, this is somebody else's project. Um, the guy's a friend, he's had it for 10 years, and he's done bits of it, but not all of it. So I think the best thing I can do is just take a look at the fuselage as to where we are, and maybe the wings as well, and actually do something I never do and read the instructions and go back through each individual step to see what's been done and what hasn't been done and just work my way through the book and hope the time it gets to the end, you should have a flying aircraft. That's the idea. So this build series is gonna be a little bit different. Um, rather than like building the traditional extreme flight and just going through a few steps and getting out a couple of videos, I don't know how long it's gonna take. I have no idea. I mean, it looks pretty straightforward, but some of these are slightly vague. So I'm just gonna film as I'm going I'm um, gonna break up the build series of each video to probably about 20, 25 minutes. Hopefully maybe three, four videos, we'll get, to, we'll get through it. But I'll keep going through it, and if you guys keep watching, that'd be great. So let's start off by having a look, closer look at what we've got, start with the fuselage, then the wings, and we'll work out what the first couple of steps are and go through those. So here are the instructions. I just thought I'd throw up the specifications quickly. So it's two meters in length, 1.8 meter wingspan, loading blah blah blah, flying weight should be around 6.9 kilograms, 15 pounds, six to nine channels, interesting. And the engine, because obviously this was originally designed for IC, should be four stroke, 124 stroke, which I think is about a 25 cc equivalent, roughly, depending on what four stroke you go with, say 25 to 30 cc equivalent. So we're obviously converting this to electric, um, and part of that work's been done already, so I know this hatch has been made and cut out. Pumps a little bit of TLC on it at the moment because it's lost its its magnets. But this is where our batteries are going to end up sitting. Now there's a wiring system in there. I'm going to pull all that out. There's a UBEC in there. Matter of fact, if we go to the front of the aircraft, I've already loosened off the cowling and pull that out. We're actually going to swap out the motor because this was originally going to be fitted with this turn G. 6374, which I think, you know, it's probably about a 30cc motor, roughly. I mean, you guys can look up the specs if you want to, or, or link them below when I find them. But we're gonna go to the normal standard setup that we like to use, which is X-Power, so by Extreme Flight. Um, we're gonna use X-Power 35cc in this, um, with the Blazing Star standoff. So all this is gonna come out, including the ESC, which is a pretty old ESC. I can't even see what make it is from this angle but yeah that's going to come out and we're going to put a castle 160 in there and the reason why we're doing that is because i like that setup i know that setup works i use it in a bunch of other models i mean the laser over here is a x power 35 with the castle the ng has an x power 40 with the castle two models i built recently same setup again so it just set up that works i know it's going to have a lot of power so we're going to pull that out when it arrives, motor's on order, ESC's on order, standoff's on order. And we're also gonna hopefully do a three or five bladed propeller on the front of this to make it look more scale. So if we having the bigger motor, 35cc, it's gonna help with the extra props that we're, we're putting on the front, or the bigger prop. So hatch needs a bit of repair work. We need to get some pilots in here, I think, because why not? We need to make it look reasonably scale so we've got instrument panel in there obviously very dusty at the moment when it comes to the canopy that's going to need cutting out and fitting it's currently sitting on the side because um, this is you know an old model guys for the four is at least 10 years old and 
you know some of the build processes have changed back then so you just need to do a little bit more finishing on this and other ones and um, the tail section once looking at i'm pretty sure the tail although it looks like it's going to be quick release but i think it's glued in so we'll look at that when we get to it rather than done this mechanism i believe is for the elevator servo and the elevators go into this into this rod but i'll spin it the other way around i'll do that now i'll turn it upside down to have a better look at that esc but say it's coming out that's all coming out so big mechanical retracts going in this nose wheels in there already um which has got like a closed loop system on it going back through here to a servo obviously that's slack at the moment because the wheel is down but we need to have a look at that as well um you need to fit the wing it's going to be one piece wing the wing panel is in two halves at the moment it's actually a one piece wing which will be glued together the two half sections then drilled through there's some wedges in here so drill through with locking blind nuts in there so again something different and we'll put in dowels in the front of the wing to hold that in so i need to really look at that get the wheel out of the way make sure it's secure on the front a little bit messy inside at the moment but don't worry we'll tidy all that up going down the back section then so we've kind of got a panel off at the moment which i do have but just to show you the rear servos so one for the rudder which is this one here going through so all the servos are internal which is really nice um, that goes through to the rudder which is kind of done just once checking over she's using standard Savox servers here so good make of servos but these aren't digital They're analog servers but okay fine and then this is the elevator mechanism I was talking about so it obviously has to have a rod coming back to this servo and I'm pretty sure that goes in each half of the elevator so that's pretty much the fuselage so let's take a look at the stabilizer and the wings so here's the stabilizer obviously originally i thought this was a plugging system um but i'm pretty sure it isn't again we're first in the manual but basically aluminium tube this here is a template which you use to be able to drill pegs into each side of the stabilizer and also into the fuselage the elevators have been hinged already However, I've got a sneaky feeling we're gonna to have to cut those hinges out because we need to put the rods that come out of the fuselage into the elevator. I don't think they sit on top, that wouldn't make sense. They've got to be on the on the pivot section, on the middle there. So we're gonna to have to cut this out, put the rods in and then re-hinge it in slightly different positions. Uh, not a big deal. I've just pulled out one of the wing panels. So they're obviously both the same. Very nice, I mean, lovely shape. And actually pretty good build quality as well it really is love the little tips on here where it flares up and i've just spotted as well the lights in so we've already put all well, the lights already gone in there so it looks like we do have a light kit for this model which is going to be nice a whole bunch of cables coming out here which are about a mile and a half too long but we'll worry about that when we get that far we we'll soon adjust those let's flip the wing over so have a look at the underside of the wing have the a1 servo in place we will pop that out i'm pretty sure the servo attaches to the actual hatch on these so you unscrew screw those four screws and it'll come out with that but obviously needs a rod and a horn fitted we need to check the hinges as well so being an old model that I've started 10 years ago there may be the hinges may have worn but sitting around but we'll just check those over um, we've got flaps here bottom hinged really nice nice flat movement there going on again needs the rods needs a horn and then we have a great big hole here which is obviously for the retract so that's i believe there's a plastic part we'll go and find in a minute that sits in here first and the retract goes down on top and probably some kind of door or hatch as well that opens with the retract so we'll have a look at that and find that and what else have we got and yeah and there's where the brace will go so I'm, again, need to look at the instructions. I'm pretty sure the two wing halves get glued together with the plywood brace in the middle as well and possibly some dowels and then it will become a one, one piece wing. Let's see if we can find the parts for this. The model came with a box of goodies. I think that's the only way to describe it. So instructions that we've seen already, which we'll be going through. We have flight lights, owner's manual. That must be the system for the lighting that's going into the model. Yeah, more, more stuff for me to read, PP. What else do we have? Retract system. That's good. We're going to need that just to how to set that up. Looks quite straightforward though. 
looks like all three to go into a program board and then a separate power it's pretty pretty normal then off to the receiver so pretty look to get those powered up pretty quick so i can get that nose wheel open hmm. tempted to do that now but no won't do it just out with the receiver okay what else do we have Ah, oh, so YT International are the guys who make this. What's that? They make the retracts. Not sure. Have to find out about that. But some paperwork, more paperwork. We'll go for that later. This one I'll get to is box of bits. So I have a big old JP spinner in there, which looks really nice. I don't. Well, I think it is scale from the model. It's right shape, definitely. But if I ask you, that's quite. That's quite a weight compared to modern standards. Now I remember when these were all the all the rage. Just use this star spinner. On my pattern models many many years ago and i'm probably talking like 25 30 years ago um i mean it would do but we'll see what else we can find for the model move that out and then screws love it oh yeah we've got the side exhaust to stick on seen those here we go here's one of the retracts for the wing uh, that'd be the wrong retract for that wing or for the other wing panel rather but you get the idea so you have to go in there and be mounted with these blocks i think they might be for the door those blocks so that'll be mounted effectively there i know it's on my wrong wheel um but just give me the idea let's leave that there for a minute what else do we have that's the brace it's like a little treasure chest this isn't it does anybody else enjoy doing this sort of stuff oh that's the underneath section for here so that will go on like so and we'll make that removable so we can still access those servos for maintenance and adjustments we put a couple of screws in there or maybe a magnet system or maybe screws and magnets i don't know yet we'll work it out you back no not using that oh, that's what i want one of these Aha, uh -huh. and all suddenly it looks 10 times better. Oh, yeah. What a difference that makes. So, that's obviously going to go in at some place. Not sure why it's out at the moment. It might have been just because the wires are being run, or just didn't get that far. But that will go in, makes a fast improvement. Uh, and then we've got one of these. Which one is it? Never very really good at puzzles. And that will go on there so that will attach to the wheel and will open up with the wheel I'm pretty sure and come up and come back down so it's not going to be the wheels obviously not completely enclosed like you would get in some models you'll still see the wheel but obviously we'll make it more aerodynamic with the retracts going in and folding there so I'm looking forward to doing that I haven't done retracts for a long time uh, one of my pattern models which are actually up here in the cover has got retracts in there I'm gonna have to get that out soon actually show you guys um, but yes, yeah, so it'd be nice to do something, something different with the retracts. What else do we have in here? Probably just bits and pieces that we'll go through. Oh, there's half of the other retract. Okay. Yeah, so various bits and weird stuff that I've not seen before and we need to work out. So definitely a bit of a project this. So guys, we are going to make a start. I mean, that's the quick reveal. Pretty still got time left in this video. Let's open up these instructions and work out where we're starting. I wanted to show you this because I think it's absolutely great. Look at these diagrams. Look at that. 12 AA size batteries, into a transmitter, six channels, engine. And I love this on this side. Booster cord, D size batteries, plug wrench. I mean, it's just great, isn't it? It just shows how much the hobby has changed. Um, but yeah, okay, it's bring back some memories for me. So anyway, let's move on. Those are tools we're gonna need. This is step one. So it looks like we are starting with the wings. Something pretty exciting. Um, so we know the hinge, so what we're going to do, check the hinges, uh, make sure the gap's right, we're there, probably done already, um, oh sorry, we're doing flaps and hinges at the same time, so what we can probably do is pop out those servos, make sure they're okay, and still working, yeah, they do kind of like fit to that hatch as I thought, and we can find the rods, we can find the rods, or make up some rods, find the clevers as, as well, so we can actually progress this today, let's spin the page. Why is it so hard to do things one handed? Um, okay, there we go. Five, six. And what we're we doing up here. Oh, yeah, there we go. 
but that's going to be the equivalent of the horn. So I might end up changing some of these parts as we go through it. If there's newer parts available, depends what I have in stock here in the workshop. Okay, six. Quite nice to tell you what bit you're going to need. And goes onto the flaps. More flap action. And then we're still doing the flaps. Doing the flap servo again. More flap servo stuff. Yep, doing the flap connecting it. More bits here. Oh, and then assembly of the main wing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to probably step 12. I'll show you some bits as we go. And then it's the cool bit where we get to assemble the wings together and do the retracts. Something exciting. Right, so update time. I've just pulled out the four screws of the hatch to check these servos over. So as you can see, they are mounted to these. So I'm just going to check all the screws on there, make sure the head's okay, then just pop them back in for now and probably leave them as is. Servos are new still current spec as well. I uh, do that on both the flaps the flaps and the ailerons and then I just started looking in all the various boxes and bits and pieces for the rods. Now it looks like the rods for both of these are missing but that's okay because according to the instructions it's just a case of two 300 millimeter rods with thread on one end so not a problem we can we can do that however then I started questioning actually I'm not sure I like this connection set up here. Um, let me just show you that a little bit closer. There you go, that's better. So it's just a case of, you know, there's a rod that goes all the way through the control surface with a washer on both sides with lock knot going down onto it. And you thread this keeper on the top of that rod that's gone through, the screw basically, the bolt. Then you put a clevis against there and you've got a, a two mil bolt that goes through that as well and then you've got the rod which is missing comes into the whole lot I mean it's kind of fine but we're kind of used to using ball joints and stuff now then on the other end you can just see they're basically just bending over the wire into the server head which I don't like so I think it's time we, we get a threaded rod or rod that's threaded on both ends and then when it comes to connecting the servo we can use a ball joint on the servo and then for the you know, rather than using this let me zoom you in a bit rather than using this which is what I've just kind of showed you that goes through the aileron the only problem with that or through the flap rather both control surfaces is you get to see this on the other side so on the top of the wing you'll see this chrome section and this screw and I don't like that to be honest with you so I'm used to using these ones which is a similar setup same purpose but it doesn't go all the way through the wing I um, see it's got the end for the connection there so a clevis or ball joint so I'm thinking what we could do is just put these on, that side goes close to the hinge, and then they'll do the same same job, actually probably there, with the ball joint going, small rod here. So I think we're going to do that, because they'll just screw down, so there's no there's no plate in here, but this is a, a tough piece of balsa or a tough piece of wood, and normally you'd see like a, a plate to go in to hold the horn, but I'm pretty sure with the self tapping screws it should be okay, especially with a bit of Sino on those screws. It should be more more than adequate and that way we won't see the won't see anything on the top side of the wing so that's the approach i'm going it just so happens i've got four or five of these in stock so i've got enough to do both wing panels um, so i'm going to go and get some rods made up or see what threaded rod i've got get find some ball joints as well and then i'm going to get these two finished and then i will show you okay guys so got part way through doing the wing as you can see on the flap i've got the control horn and also on the aileron as well um, I've had a conversation with the owner of the aircraft and we've decided that we're going to swap out the servos. So though these servos will be absolutely fine, um, they're not high voltage servos, we want to run 8.4 volts across the entire system. Um, so we're going to swap out for the Savox uh, 1270 TG servos, which is what I use in the majority of my models, uh, if not all of them. So we're going to go ahead and put those in at the same time on each wing panel and also on the rest of the control surfaces as well, including the, the elevator and the rudder. So just thought I'd give you a quick update on that, let you know I'm doing that. Okay, so next up I'm going to have a look at this um, retract area. Now I'm jumping around a little bit here because I haven't got the rods yet. I need to order some parts. I have swapped out the servos. Um, I don't want to waste any time, so I'm going to have a move on and have a look at this area here. So first off it says to cut this out. This has already been cut out from the mould, so that's great. Next step is to get the right one 
is that one. So basically it says, uh, make sure it fits in, which it does. And then what you need to do is just mark around it because you need to epoxy this in. So I need to trim back about four or five mil of the covering all the way around. So I've got a nice surface to epoxy to. Now what I've done is I've just drawn around it uh, with a pencil and then I'll cut on the inside line of the pencil, on the inside of the line, and then um, I'll remove the pencil line afterwards. So you probably can't see the pencil line on the camera. No, you can't, uh, but don't worry about that. So what we do is, I'm happy with the wiring. I've tested both these servos as well, so I know they work. So I've got three wires coming out at the moment, like so, one's the lighting, and the other two are servos. Both servos are working. So we'll go ahead, get this cut out, get this stuck in, and then we can fit the retract. Hey okay, guys, so we've hit a bit of a snag, unfortunately. Um, we've got two issues to work through, one slightly more major than the other. First off, we've decided to change these horns out. We're not gonna use these ones. We're gonna use ones that have M3 holes in them. Um, so we're gonna use M3 rod with M3 ball joints, which I, I have now. Um, so we can get some new horns, that's nice and easy. Unfortunately, as you can see, I've been working on the retract here. Um, and as you can see from this bit of video footage I'll show you, is the retract was working fine when I was fitting it out, but then unfortunately, when I next tried it, it stripped. The sank inside here, I've taken this completely apart. I'll show you again a few clips now. And one of the cogs on there has actually got a flat spot on it. So this retract is now completely out of order. Um, such a shame because it was looking, as you can see from the clip, it was looking really nice, it was fitting really nice as well. Um, but we're going to have, end up having to probably change the retracts out to another make or try and get another set of these retracts. So rather than hold up the build with those two, one minor and one major issues, we're going to crack on with the build, get the two wing halves joined together so they're ready for the fuselage. So the next step is to cut out the centre line or centre hole for the for the leads basically. So the leads can't come out through the middle here because two wing halves are going to be joined together. So we've got to measure 200 mil from the leading edge, 20 mil from the root, and that's where we need to draw through on the top section of the wing. Right, so I'm just going to do this by eye. 200 takes us back here roughly. Not roughly, precisely. So I'm going to stick a bit of tape there, transfer that across, and then we're going to come 20 mil in off that line. And that's I know it could be out of square here, but I'm using the edge of the ruler to be square. And we're there, so that is where we need to put a hole. So what I'm going to do is probably find a, a grommet to go through there. Just give it a bit of a nice look. So obviously this side of the wing is going to go inside the fuselage on this model. It doesn't say what size hole to draw, but obviously it can be enough to get three wires coming through. So we've got three, we've got an extra wire because we've got lights, flap and aileron, not labelled up at the moment. And they need to go back through the wing and through that hole there. So let me draw that. So now that's open to this stage, it's obviously not the right size yet. Let's double check that. It's close. I'm going to tidy it up with my perma grits. So guys, if you don't use these, I really recommend it. Perma grit tools, they've been going around for absolutely years now. I'm pretty sure I used these when I first started the hobby when I was 14. And that, I'm afraid to say, was 31 years ago. So these are great. Actually, I still have my original set. I just came to recently to one of my mates, so they last and last and last. And there we go, there's the grommet in place and the wires coming through. So the next step in this build is to join the two wing halves together. And before we do that, we apparently need to prepare the wing using a template, which I'll show you. Okay, so we have a rib template here, um, which is just a template, and we have the main joiner as well with a slight bit of dihedron. So we only need to make sure the joiner goes through first, like so. And then we just slide this template on, and this will give us the position at the front and back for the two 30mm dowels that need to go through. 
So we'll mark these up, drill those, take the template back off and then glue these dowels in. Then we use a template on the other wing just to put holes in. Then that, then when the wing joins together, we're gluing this section and gluing the dowels together to help it stay aligned. So let me get these drilled out first and get ready for gluing the wing. Okay, so we have the two wing halves here. We've used the template as you've seen to put the dowels in and I'll put the holes in the other side as well using the template. So dowels in one side, holes in the other side. I've done a dry fit putting the two halves together. Um, so I'm now ready to glue up the brace on both sides, put the brace in and put the two halves together making sure there's plenty of glue around. So this is a little bit tricky because it does have dihedral in it. Obviously you've got to make sure the brace is the right way up. Um, wings have dihedral, so they're coming up slightly. But really just getting lots of epoxy in there, get them nice and tight and all should be good. And there we go guys, finally some progress on the wing. It is now one wing panel joined in the middle. Slightly trickier than it should have been really. Um, firstly, ignore the wires. That's four connections on each side of the wing because you've got um, flaps, ailerons, lights and retracts on each side. Um, but yeah, it was slightly trickier because it was such a tight fit. So it's once I smeared epoxy on the main spar, it made the spar difficult to get inside the wing. So I done one half at a time, epoxy the spar into one side and just put them together dowels are slightly out of a line there's two holes so quick adjustment and together even though I was using half hour epoxy it's very hot here today in the UK and it dried pretty quick but they're together okay. so on that note guys it's probably a good time to take a pause there take a breath um, we've put it at about 25 30 minutes now anyway so let's have a recap what we've done we've taken the first initial look at the kit uh, we've gone over all the components kind of worked out what needs to be done picked up the instruction manual and then made the start on the wing. We've changed out the horns on the wing, although we'll probably change them again. We've swapped out all the servos on the wing to the 1270 Savox servos, um, 8.4 volt servos. Um, we've joined the two wing halves together. We've put the retracts in, we've pulled the retracts out. It's part of the hobby, yeah. So next time round, hopefully it'll be a bit more productive, although we have now progressed this kit at least. Don't forget it is 10 years old and sitting around for that long. So next time round, we, regardless of what we're doing the retracts, whether they're here or not, we're gonna get the wing fitted to the fuse large, and that's really a case of putting the dowels in the front and locating the rear end of the wing on the fuse large and drilling through and putting the captive nuts in. So we're gonna do that and hopefully next time around as well, we'll get the tailplane fitted. So it's gonna be over to the fuse large next time. We'll see how far we get in our time allocation. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I am enjoying it. I am enjoying it, although it's been a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. But again, part of the hobby. I'll see you next time around.